So the next speaker will be Dominic. He's a researcher at Charles University in Prague, and uh, he'll be talking about his theater uh, project. And I think it's best to leave it to you to talk about it. So welcome, and over to you. Thank you for the welcome. And by the way, can you see the presentation? Yes, we can see it. OK, great. Uh, so hi, my name is uh, Dominic Jurko. I am a student at Charles University, and I will be presenting when a robot writes a play, automatically generating a theater play script. Our project, called Theater, is a collaboration between Charles University, Švandovo Divadlo, CE Hack, Damu, and more. Here's a quick glance at the team, and let's jump to the motivation behind the project. On the 25th of January, 1921, Karol Čapek wrote RUR, which is the first theater play about robots, as you may know from the theme of this conference. And 100 years later, there's a play called AI, When a Robot Writes a Play, and it was the first theater play written by robots. Actually, it was an algorithm, so not a robot, and it wasn't entirely written, but from our calculation, 90% can be attributed to the algorithm. Our approach behind it was fourfold. First was hacking the GPT-2 language model, then building a web application for the in interface, then generating the actual theater play script, and last but not least, performing the play on stage. Now I would like to talk about how we tinkered and hacked with the GPT-2 language model and what even is a GPT-2 language model. So a language model can be ex explained by a task and it is which word should follow. Sounds pretty simple, but let's give an example. For example, I woke up in the morning and went to the, when us humans read this sentence, we immediately have a couple of words which we think are probable in this context. For example, kitchen, bathroom, cinema, horse. And some of the words fit more and some fit less. And it depends on the context and the human. And the language models, they need to learn what language looks like to be able to model it. And what they need to do is basically read a large amount of text that we have on the internet, like books, news, websites, film subtitles, and so on. A really naive way how to implement a language model is called a foreground model. And it models language by asking a question. How often are words A, B, C followed by a word B? If you frame this in such a way, then you can answer queries such as, is went to the bathroom more probable than went to the horse? And if you actually do it on 100 million lines of Wikipedia, you get the answer. And with the advent of neural language models, uh, they can see a large number of words than four. For example, the GPT-2 model can see up to 1,000. And today we can have models that see 4,000 previous words. They have this great mechanism called attention, which chooses which preceding words are important to the context. These models can estimate word similarity, and they learn complex internal representations and operations on them. So the basic approach is to take the largest neural language model available and feed it with a theater script-like prompt. For example, a man is driving in his car. He sees a girl hitchhiking next to the road. He stops the car. Man, do you want to ride? Girl, oh, yes, please. Feed this string to the model and let it generate the continuation. Then we use machine translation to translate it from English to Czech. And we have a, basically a Czech theater play. But when we actually have a sample output from the model, it has several issues wrong with it. And it's very hard for us humans to specifically say what is wrong with it because language is just so hard. So if you read this thoroughly, you will come up with 20 examples of why this is wrong. And our work and job is to find these and try to resolve them. So what we do in this project is we try to restrict the set of characters that can appear in the play because neural language models like to introduce new ones or forget the old ones. And we achieve this by modifying the next token probability to restrict these characters to a specific set we would want to see in the play. Also, the repetitiveness of models is a big problem. And we achieve a better and less repetitive plays by dynamically increasing repetition penalty, which is a hyperparameter for the model, 
or discard and regenerate if repetition occurs by a series of uh, control decision flows. Also, as I've mentioned, the limited context for these models is a big problem. And, we, and the plays are usually very long. So we solve this by using an extractive summarization step. And we take the previously generated play or half of the play and summarize it into the top five most important lines, which we then take and feed it to the next iteration for two generations. Then some work in progress and plans we have for the near future. We are currently generating the whole play, not only individual scenes as were on the premiere. And we do so by a hierarchical approach where we basically switch the task of summarization, which aims to make long sequences into short ones. We want to make short sequences into long ones. So first generate a title, and from the title generate an outline, and from the outline generate individual scenes. We would also, also like to explore character personalities and perspectives, maybe have some data-driven approaches to finding cluster and finding and clustering uh, character archetypes, like a hero or a negative person, where we can then employ character embeddings and conditionally generate really negative character, for example. And in uh, theater to theory, there are things called dramatic situations where the actors, they don't look at the script as a series of dialogues, but as a series of these situations, which can be defined that they, uh, we have a certain theme. For example, a situation called intruder has a certain theme where there's one uninvited person and he enters the scene. We are in the process of annotating play with this type of information, where we try to bootstrap and detect situation in unlabeled data, and later on, fine tune to generate situations such as Arctic or intruder. Also, various machine translation issues uh, arise as English and Czech are quite different as a language and gender and politeness are treated differently. For example, in Czech, when you want to be polite, you need to use specific uh, syntactic rules to basically change what you're saying to be more polite, which are missing in English. So we need to postfix those two. Also, document level translation would be really beneficial because, as you may know, when you translate sentence by sentence, you oftentimes lose the context between the sentences and the translation uh, result is not up to par. Now, the web application. My colleague will now give you a quick demo on how we actually work with our application. So let me show you how to use the H robot. We'll add a new scene. I'll call it Master's Death. And I will copy paste some input. It's the morning. The robot enters the room of his master. He's real old and sick. The robot sees that his master is not doing very well this morning. He sits at the edge of his bed and takes his hand. Robot. I remember how you jumped on this bed when you were little. You were full of beans. Master, we both know I am dying. So I submitted. So now the CH robot tool uh, gets this input text and the GPT-2 model hidden in it starts generating a continuation of this text. It all takes like half a minute. So I'll skip forward a bit. And we get the result. So we can see the input that we entered. And we can see a continuation generated by the model. Hmm. <laughs> okay, it starts to be about some killing. Interesting. And you can also see that uh, it gets automatically translated to a Czech language uh, by a machine translation system. Now, uh, the user has several options. Uh, one option is that if the user likes what is generated, 
So uh, they can simply click continue and uh, well, it always generates uh, 10 lines so and then stops. So after clicking continue, it will generate uh, another 10 lines. And um, here is some further output. So the scene now goes on. So we have now 20 lines in the scene. And again, if we like it, we can just continue. If we don't like it, we have further options. Uh, maybe we don't like uh, what was generated. So let's see, we like the first three lines, but not the continuation. So we can click the X here and the text from here on gets deleted. And another option is generated by uh, the model. And so this is the output. And the first three lines are kept. And the fourth line, now that's a new continuation. And this is version where repetition is not strictly forbidden. So sometimes uh, the model keeps repeating itself. So maybe uh, we can use the third option, which is to manually enter some input when we feel that we need to push the model in a different direction. So let's see uh, what the jet model now generates. So we do see what we saw before. And now there is uh, the line that we entered. Uh, so it's colored gray, similar to the, the prompt, so that we know that this is manually entered. And the model now picks up uh, the input with this line and this pushes uh, the generation in another direction. And that's basically everything. There was a quick demo, and now how we w went along in producing the script. So producing the script was done in two parts. The first one was generating the individual scenes and then post-processing them. And the TH robot, as you have seen, was operated by a professional theater dramaturg, and he had a couple of intervention options to input the prompt, choose a different variant, or manually add a line. And in the post-processing, well, they could do small deletions, small edits, and fix errors in automatic translation. And when we actually counted the number of interventions and post-processing, this is where the 90% from the beginning comes from. So we can actually contribute 90% of the content directly to the algorithm. And staging the play is the last part. Uh, only the dialogues were generated. Everything else was done manually from the stage direction, scene design, music, costume. It was done by a professional theater team consisting of a director, two dramaturgs, six actors, a scenographer, costume designer, choreographer, and more. And with this, I would like to invite you to later in the evening uh, join the Zoom session to see the play and join the discussion. So thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to answer some questions if there are any. So thank you very much, Dominic, for your talk. Uh, it's always fun to see output of GPT-like systems. So it, it doesn't disappoint. Um, so if there are any questions uh, by the attendees, please uh, raise your hand or type the question in the Q&A. While, um, while we were waiting for that, I have some questions. Actually, you answered uh, a lot of them at the, just at the end. <clears throat> but maybe first question is how much better or easier the process would be, if, uh, you think, if you would actually use GPT-3 rather than GPT-2? And have you done that investigation? 
thank you for the question. Uh, we have actually done some experience uh, experiments with the GPT-3 model, but uh, the underlying uh, mechanism on how they actually develop language is exactly the same. And it doesn't really solve uh, the issues that we thought or think are still most pressing, and there is this inco inconsistencies and incoherence in text. It looks slightly better, but it's not groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. So my, my second question relates to uh, one of the issues of GPT, um, GPT like systems is the fact that they don't really have any kind of long term memory in between the prompts. So I guess the way that you incorporated this was via like experts, theater experts that actually kept some some storyline in mind and guided by the interventions. Is that is it correct? No, that is partially correct. Mm -hmm. We also used, as I've mentioned, a summarization system, which uh, took the previously generated scenes and uh, made them into really like sh short prompts. So the system could see really the still version of what happened in the previous scene or previously in the play. Okay. So there don't seem to be any more questions. So thank you very much, Dominic, for your presentation. And um, yeah, let's move on to the next speaker. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you. Have a nice day.